Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to build something I'm calling a modern retro console or MRC. Basically we're going to add a label, a floppy drive, so we can play all these retro machines using modern equipment. Let's check it out! Several months ago, I came across something that I thought was very interesting. It's this Vilrose Raspberry Pi 4 Complete Desktop Kit. Basically, I picked up the 4 gigabyte unit. It's got a Raspberry Pi, it's got the console, everything all included in this one kit. The unit has a retro look to it, but we're going to spruce it up just a little bit. I already have two videos, one for installing RetroPie 4.6 and another for Twister OS. So if you're not sure how to install either one of those, definitely check it out. I've got a link in the show notes below. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Twister OS because it includes a lot of applications pre-installed, including RetroPie. And if you're interested in this project idea, I'll put a link down below to the WagnersTechTalk.com MRC page which includes all my notes and ideas and so forth on this project. One of your first questions may be, why did I pick this console? I mean, out of all the cases out there, why this one? Well, a keyboard is needed for playing most retro consoles, and this has a keyboard built in. It looks like a classic computer console as well. It's got an integrated touchpad and mouse and you can easily play most gaming and computer consoles with this one single unit. You don't have to continually swap out a mouse or a keyboard. There's fewer messy wires and setup, uh, and it's actually cheaper or more flexible than buying several of the mini consoles that are now available, such as the C64 Mini or Max or the Atari Flashback, PlayStation Classic, the list goes on. So here you have an all-in-one unit, with the keyboard integrated, touchpad, and it just looks cool. All of my floppy disks are sitting up in the attic in storage, so I figured I'd go ahead and buy a new box of floppy disks. And I was pretty amazed that they uh, actually still sell them, but apparently it's still a thing. I guess there's a lot of people that still need 3.5 inch floppies. Now I just need a 3.5 inch floppy drive. And here we go. We got one of those two. This is going to be fun, guys. We're going to go ahead and get it set up. It does have a USB connection, so we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind, adding a 3.5 inch floppy drive is absolutely unnecessary with the Raspberry Pi 4, but it gives it a nice aesthetic look. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Vilrose Raspberry Pi 4 Complete Desktop Kit. This is the touchpad hub for the Raspberry Pi 4, which is our console. Now we have our Raspberry Pi 4. It's a 4 gigabyte unit. It includes two micro HDMI to HDMI cables. Very cool. We also have heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi 4. And in this package, there is a 32 gig Samsung micro SD card and a USB reader for it, as well as the power supply for the console, which is of course USB-C, and we'll take a quick look at the voltage and amperage here, and there is a quick start guide for the Raspberry Pi 4 kit. Very, very cool. Alright, so now let's go ahead and get started putting this thing together. Let's quickly go over the ports on the Raspberry Pi 4, just so you know where everything is and what it does. First off, you have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit Ethernet. On this side, those are your GPIO header pins. That's where we're going to hook up the fan. This is your display port, your camera port. And on the opposite side here, we have the USB-C power, two HDMI ports, your AV output, and on the opposite side here, this is where you install the micro SD card. Cool! Now we'll go ahead and install the heat sinks. 
The larger one goes to the CPU. The elongated one goes to the RAM chip here. And one of the two smaller ones goes to the USB controller. And the last one goes to the Ethernet controller. You simply peel out the backing and gently place it in the middle of the chip as best you can and give it a nice little push when you're done. And this is what it looks like with all the heat sinks applied. Now let's go ahead and open the console itself. Very cool. You have a little package here that includes all the screws that you need for installing the Raspberry Pi, as well as the back plate here. Speaking of back plate, there it is. This is where we're going to install the Raspberry Pi. This is what it looks like on the inside. There is a battery cover. You will need two AAA batteries. This is for the keyboard and touchpad, and it does have a uh, dongle. And this is where we hook up the fan. All right, so let's go ahead and open the package. These are the three screws that are needed for the Raspberry Pi 4 board itself. And then this is for attaching the panel to the back of the case. And there's six screws there. And it also includes this little screwdriver thingy, which I'm not going to use in this video, but I'm sure it would work. All right, so you just place the Raspberry Pi 4 into the holder and open up the screws. This is the package with the three screws. And I'll go ahead and speed through this real quick for you. And go ahead and make sure it's nice and tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this back cover just so you can see this is where your micro SD card will go and you have access to it at the bottom of the console, which is very, very good. <laughs> you don't have to unscrew everything to get to the micro SD card. All right, so now we'll replace the cover. And now we'll take a look at the bottom here. I'm going to remove the cover and take the dongle out and go ahead and plug it into the Raspberry Pi 4. That way we'll have the keyboard and touchpad support. I'll also install the two AAA batteries into the battery compartment. And we'll go ahead and close that up. There we go. Next, we'll hook up the active cooling fans. We'll take the red wire and plug it into pin number one. And the black wire will go into pin 14. So I'm just going to count out seven here and put it on the far left according to the angle that I have here. And plug it in. Good deal. Now we'll go ahead and install the back cover and put in all six screws like this. There's our screws. And I'll go ahead and speed through this process. Not much to it. Just got to make sure you get them all in there. Get them good and tight, but not too tight. Cool. This is really sharp looking. I like this. <laughs> There's your Raspberry Pi 4 connections over there on the far left. And on the back, you've got your USB-C, your two HDMI, your AV output. Very cool. The power adapter also has a switch, which is great. We'll go ahead and plug in the power. And now the micro HDMI connection. You want to plug it into the port nearest the power. And under this top compartment, you'll find the switch for the keyboard. So I'm going to flip that on, close it back up. Now this is a little more than I wanted to spend, and I went looking for a bunch of different computers, and this one seemed to be the highest quality label I could find, this Commodore 64 label. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it, and we'll go ahead and add the controller. Let's plug it into a USB port, and now a floppy drive. Again, optional, just something I want to goof around with. All right, so I'm going to turn it on. And let's see. Now that's a sound I've not heard in a long time. A long time. Let's take a look at the keyboard itself. Actually, it feels really good. It has a very nice feel. It's easy to type on. I personally am not a big fan of trackpads, so I'll most likely use this with a mouse instead of a trackpad. But it's good in a pinch. 
For many of the keys, especially the function keys up at the top, you have to hold down the function key and press the associated blue area of the keyboard. We'll go ahead and take a look at all the keys on the keyboard kind of close up so you can get a good feel for the key layout on this keyboard. Well, that's pretty much it with the hardware setup. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at some of the software and emulators. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using Twister OS, which is essentially Pi OS with a lot of pretty stuff. So, for instance, this theme, we're going to go to Raspbian XP. Check it out. <laughs> it makes your Raspberry Pi look like a Windows XP machine. There's also lots of utilities. Here's a quick one I want to show you, Commander Pi. It's a quick and easy way of overclocking your Raspberry Pi. You just go in here, type in some values. I'm using the recommended values, apply and reboot, and your Raspberry Pi 4 is overclocked. Next, I want to show you a pretty cool utility here, DOSBox. This is all pre-installed for you when you download the image for Twister OS. So here I'm going to mount the C drive over to a directory I have called Retro, and we can go to the C drive and, of course, browse around just like we were using an actual DOS-based PC. Play on Linux is a cool application that allows you to install other applications and was recently added in the 1.5 release of Twister OS, which came out just a few days before this video came out. Now let's go to RetroPie. So I'm going to double click the RetroPie icon, go into Emulation Station, and I'm going to show you where you can go to install some additional emulators for various consoles. For example, the first one we're going to take a look at is Amy Berry. It's already installed, but this is where you would go if you wanted to install that. So you just hit enter in there and install it from binary. Also, you can go to experimental packages. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and install the TI-99 SIM. Before any of these emulators show up in Emulation Station, you will need to copy your ROMs to the path below. Once you do that, and after you've installed the emulators, Go ahead and exit out and restart Emulation Station by clicking the Start button on your controller. Then move down to Quit and Restart Emulation Station. Press A and Yes. And now you have your TI and your Amiga consoles available. So we're going to go to Start Amy Berry, pressing A. From this menu, we're going to set up two drives. One is going to be our workbench disk, and the other is going to be a scratch disk that we're just going to mess around with. So I'm going to select the workbench, and now I'm going to navigate to the media, Pi, and the disk label is test, and there's my file. That's a disk I created earlier. Let me show you real quickly how to create your own floppy disk. So essentially what you want to do is go over to the floppy drives, and move down to where it says create three and a half inch double-sided disk and browse to your location give the file a name and click OK and it'll create an ADF file and that's where you can store your own files pretty cool alright so now we'll go ahead and start up the emulator so we'll move down to start and we're gonna start the Amiga I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this just so you can see what the boot sequence looks like. Now keep in mind there are tons of emulators that you can play on here. You can run PlayStation, Atari 2600, you name it. All of those consoles are available to you. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and type in something here. And we're going to save it to a floppy disk. So I'm going to say typing on the Amiga is fun. Go up here to file, save as. And I'm going to type df1 colon in the name of my file which is simply test save and you hear the floppy kicking in <laughs> that's pretty neat all right so let's do the opposite i'm going to close out a notepad i'm going to go back in so go to open and i'm going to type df1 colon test again uh, you have to move your cursor up there we go test click ok And it read my file back in. Very cool. Now we'll close out of that. And let's have a little bit of fun before we leave here. We'll go to Say. 
and I'm going to quickly type something in and hit enter. Hello, Wagner's Xbox fans. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move over to another console, the TI-994A that we discussed earlier. So I'm just going to go down here and pick a cartridge. We'll go to Burger Time, and I'll press a key on the keyboard. Okay, so let's go on to a classic that was very popular back in the day, and that's Parsec. And I'm pretty lousy at it. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to something I'm a little better at. Let's go into programming. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, I'll use the keyboard to type in a program. So we're going to clear the screen, we're going to ask for your name, and say nice to meet you, and so forth. Alright, so now let's run it. And type in your name, press enter. And that's that. Very cool. I've had a lot of fun playing around with this Vilrose Raspberry Pi 4 Complete Desktop Kit. I've tried it out with a lot more systems than what you see in this video. I've also installed PlayStation, Atari 2600, Commodore 64, tons of different emulators, but this video is getting long and it's time to stop. I have to stop at some point, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to see more, please check out wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi4 gaming. That's another page I have on Raspberry Pi 4 gaming specifically. I do think this is an awesome kit for anyone who's looking for a, a retro console type of device. It can replace so many other standalone devices that uh, I think it's totally worth it. I would have liked to have seen that the wireless keyboard and mouse is actually wired up directly to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 4 itself, but I'm sure that's something that uh, we can mod. But otherwise, wonderful device. I hope you enjoyed it. And I've actually got a helper today who's actually going to close out this video. Take it away. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.